Hello, uh, welcome to the Jenkins Documentation Office Hours. This is the EU US edition, uh, and today is May 23rd, 2024. Uh, around the table, we have myself, Kevin Martins, Bruno Rogerson, and Chris Stern joining us as well. Uh, Mark will be joining us today. He's out on, uh, it's his birthday, so he's enjoying himself there, um, but we'll soldier on regardless. Uh, for the agenda today, uh, we've got the weekly release, uh, the last, L the latest LTS release that happened last week. Uh, the next LTS release that's scheduled for June. Some notes on the version docs project that's ongoing. Uh, just some work in progress that Mark recently submitted. Some notes on the Google Summer of Code. Uh, contributor Spotlight and what that's looking like for the next couple of uh, entries. And the fact that we published Jan's today, uh, yesterday. Uh, and then uh, I wanted to just touch base on the Blue Ocean Deprecation Project, uh, something that's created in GitHub that we can go over. Uh, and then just a couple of housekeeping notes uh, for Asia Docs office hours, both uh, later today and next week are going to be canceled. Mark is unavailable. So uh, just a heads up on that. But um, again, we'll, we'll recap at the end. Uh, any other notes or other topics to put on the agenda for today, or does that cover everyone's uh, topics? All right. So, uh, so yeah. So this week we have the weekly release of two point four five nine uh, built and delivered successfully. Change log's been published. Everything looks good there. Uh, and uh, yeah, this coming week we'll have two point four six zero. So uh, again, everything is looking good so far. I'll be working on the change log when that comes up. Uh, the weekly release uh, change log is automated uh, or generated automatically, which is great. Uh, but we just need to go in and make some tweaks if they need it. Uh, last week, we also had the LTS release for version 2.452.1. Um, so the release looks good so far. And Darren Pope and Mark Waite did a live stream the day after, just going through what's new in that version. Uh, I've linked the recording here. It's now available on the CloudBees YouTube channel, but um, this is it directly. Uh, and then the next LTS release is going to be 2.452.2, .2, of course. Uh, that's currently scheduled for June 12th. Uh, and right now, Chris Stern is the release lead. So thank you, Chris, for stepping up to that. Uh, the release preparation has started. Uh, the release candidate scheduled for next week on the 29th. Uh, and then the, again, the final release will be on June 12th. And um, I'm going to be putting the change log and upgrade guide together uh, in the coming days. So that's ready to go. Uh, we will need to wait for the backporting ticket to make sure we have every entry that will be necessary. But for the time being, I can go through and grab whatever might be available. Uh, next up, so the version docs project has been making great strides lately. Uh, Docs.jenkins.io is officially live and running. Uh, it's not quite integrated into the Jenkins infrastructure uh, slash Jenkins.io yet. Um, some more work still needs to be done in that uh, sense before it can be part of Jenkins.io, but uh, the site is live and it looks good. Um, we're just waiting on Vandy to come uh, to return and get some more work done there. Chris has been working on it as well. Um, and we're using the uh, most recent version as default. So uh, it'll say latest on the version doc site here. Um, see here. So uh, for some pages, it does have a previous version, uh, but default or latest is going to be uh, whatever the latest version is. So uh, more to come on that. Uh, and any issues that anyone might find, please report them accordingly. Um, the repo has issues. Uh, in the issue tracker, just as all the other rep repositories do. So if you find anything, definitely sit, uh, share that here. Let us know. Uh, and then for the work in progress, this is just something I want to note. Mark submitted a pull request uh, within the last uh, couple hours, just adding the plugin distribution process to the developer docs. Um, thank you, Bruno. So uh, Bruno has already reviewed and approved. I, I just have I. So uh, I think everything is good to go on that one. We can probably merge that at this point. Um, there's more than enough approval and Mark's gone and made the changes uh, as suggested. So yeah, we'll go ahead and merge that. And good, okay, great. So that's all set. Go ahead and then we'll just change that so that it makes more sense now. Great. 
Uh, and then, so the next step is the Google Summer of Code. So um, the GSOC organization meetings have been happening. The project meetings have been happening. Uh, I know I saw Valentin had recently updated the project page with some links and the meeting information on, on the project he's helping mentor. Um, there's been other uh, information and other uh, pieces that have been added to the project pages and uh, just the, the Jenkins.io overall. Uh, cool. Thank you very much, Chris, for that. Um, yeah, uh, as far as uh, Google Summer Code, Bruno, Chris, do you have any insights or notes that you wanted to make sure we get in here or share? Chris, maybe? Oh. Uh, okay, okay. So uh, I think the official starting date for the coding period is um, May 27th, so it's next Monday uh, yep. when we start. And uh, so far, like um, most projects have started, except for uh, for the RPU ones. The meetings will start next week because um, the lead mentor Alex uh, has been busy this week. And I think we'll ask the. It was a, an idea from Chris. Uh, we'll have the contributor to write a blog post regarding the bonding period, if I'm not mistaken. That was yep. your proposal, Chris, right? Yep, that's right. So it would be um, uh, a blog post written all together by all the contributors. Yeah, for the bonding period, yes. For the other okay. ones, I'm not. Here's your separate, the delighted ones. Cool. That's a great idea. I like that a lot. That's, um, I think that's a part of the process that doesn't necessarily get enough spotlight on it. So having everyone be able to come together and kind of just share their experiences thus far is a really nice way to encapsulate that and kind of uh, pull back the curtain a little bit on where Google Summer Code's at, how the community bonding period has been going, all that sort of stuff. So yeah, that's a great idea. I love it. Thank you very much, Chris. Okay. Great. Thank you very much, Bruno and Chris. Appreciate all that uh, insight and information. Great to have. And uh, yeah, I'm sure we'll get more information as the project, as it, as time goes on and more things happen. Uh, next up is the Contributor Spotlight. So this week we are we published the Contributor Spotlight for Jan Farachek. Thanks to Jan's efforts. Uh, Jan submitted, uh, I don't even know how many pull requests at this point. I know it's several, um, but Jan's uh, been very focused on the UI and UX of Jenkins and has completed a bunch of pull requests to reflect that. Um, he's helped to modernize a lot of the UI to make it fresh and look uh, a lot more uh, now friendly than it had previously. Um, buttons, forms, you know, all the little things that you might not think twice about uh, are pretty much, uh, there's like an 85% chance that Jan's done work to make sure that those are up to date and look nice and uh, appealing to everyone. So um, just tons of work from Jan. Thanks so much for all of his help with the community, with the project and everything else. This is great to see and I'm really happy to be able to share the spotlight on Jan. Yeah, it definitely deserves it. And I've been working intensively with Jenkins for only two years and I've seen so many changes in the UI thanks to Tim Jacob and uh, Jan Farachik. That's really amazing. That makes me forget that we are working with a living dinosaur. In fact, yeah. <laughs> I started with Jenkins, maybe I think it was in 200 and, um, 2014 or so. And it was already looking old uh, <laughs> 10 years ago. But nowadays it's looking more and more up to date thanks to the work of Kian and, and team. So congrats and thank you. Yep, agree that. Yeah, and, and that's a good call out to uh, Bruno. Uh, I say to 85% is Jan, but like Tim Jacob and Jan Firecheck have basically been dad team in the UI and UX for, um, I mean, as long as I've been part of the project, which is just the last couple of years, I'm sure it's much longer than that. Um, you know, and, and you can see from the stories that they've shared uh, just how important it is to them and how much they enjoy working on that aspect of it. Um, yeah. And it's really telling because the UI UX is such a, a big component of what, can, like, can, like, uh, compels a user to stick with something. Uh, if it doesn't look good from the outset, it's a lot less enticing. It's a lot less, um, you know, encouraging for them to to step up to it. So 
uh, making sure that it's up to date, making sure that it's modernized, you know, those taking those little things and updating things like icons, making sure that like the, the Jenkins.io site, even a lot of that stuff is updated. Um, Jan, like we've highlighted it before, Jan's currently working on adding a dark mode to Jenkins.io, which is a really welcome experience as well, um, as you can see there. So that's really great. And uh, just again, just how uh, much devotion Jan like commits to the UI and UX is really inspiring in that sense. Uh, and then, so next up, uh, we have Alyssa Tong, who is the uh, advocacy and outreach SIG leader um, for Jenkins. Alyssa is heavily involved in the project, even if uh, code contributions are not the point, she does a lot uh, elsewhere. And so we're going to highlight that and make sure that that gets uh, put into the spotlight. She deserves it. Uh, and then we've also got responses coming uh, from Harsh Singh, Bandit Singh, and Michelle Martineau, which is a really nice uh, addition to what we've got lined up. So uh, we've got a couple months of uh, spotlights to publish still. I'll be working on those and collaborating with the submitters for that. Um, and just really looking forward to getting those spotlights out in the next couple months. So, uh, yeah, pretty cool. And then um, Bruno or... Uh, Chris, do you know uh, if there's been any movement on uh, Rajiv for submitting his story at all? Or Oh, uh, I don't think uh, Lisa has sent him the form yet, so uh, maybe we should remind him to do so, because he did ask about it. Okay. Yeah, uh, we can definitely do that, follow up. Um, yeah, 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 we can definitely do that. Um, and then I know, um, I know I missed last week, unfortunately I've been out dealing with some, uh, stuff, but, um, the new feature to the site, if I'm not mistaken, this is the little thank you note at the bottom of the page that says thanks to whoever, uh, put the, get, put the page together or has contributed to the page. Um, the Eclipse of Dobby. Sorry, okay. excuse me for interrupting, not to the page, but to any part of the Jenkins, um, ecosystem, I would say. Got it. Okay. Yeah, I, I've uh, I've seen this I've seen this sort of thing in other projects, but it's mm -hmm. uh, it's either a full list of contributors that have contributed to the project, but it's in yeah. one specific location, or it's um, a small like thank you to whoever might have worked on the pages. So uh, let's check it out. That is not the right link whatsoever. That's okay. It's at the bottom. Scroll to the bottom. Oh, okay. Yeah. See that? Oh, cool. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, okay. That's cool. Uh, oh, yes. oh, it's written Jenkins, but yo, I was wondering if you had already implemented, uh, uh, yeah. Chris. I was kind of puzzled for a second or two. Yeah. No, yeah. <laughs> you can add it as, as a prototype. We're going to follow it as an example. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Cool. And so, the, and, um, and so that would be specific to where they make the contributions, Chris, or would it be more generalized um we do have we have collected also like according to your mark um the repo they're contributing to cool all right awesome that's really that's really neat and i like that idea a lot and i think it's uh cool. really i'm oh, sorry Mark. oh i'm sorry so i can add that to the to the tag as well so uh we're gonna say thank you and then the name of the, uh, the user yeah and then we're, uh, with a with parentheses uh closing the handle on github so how many contributions they've made for that month and uh to which repos hmm, that's pretty cool so that's getting a little bit more granular than i thought it would that's really interesting i like that um an image it, too yeah and the, and the their uh it would be their avatar from github i would imagine yeah, yeah and yeah, maybe same. even the full name if ever it's available within yeah. github I care the name and then privacies and then username and then uh, contributions and you post contributed and then maybe company name too. If they have one, that's what John Mark is trying to do, but I'm not sure. We'll <laughs> see. Yeah. Nice. Well, I'd be mean, a nice little parting gift that John Mark leaves. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Well, thank you very much, Chris, for helping uh, illustrate that and explaining a little bit more. Thank you. Welcome. So we look forward to that and yeah, more. Yeah. And this is, that's a, again, a great way to 
show our appreciation to the contributors of Jenkins. Um, they're numerous, they're global. Uh, and regardless of what that contribution is, it deserves to have that appreciation show. So lovely. Thank you. Uh, up next is uh, the Blue Ocean Deprecation Project. So um, again, this is something we've been talking about the last couple of weeks. Um, so at some point in the future, Blue Ocean is going to be deprecated. That's just how it's going to happen. We don't have a date or an exact time frame, um, but ideally sometime in the next year or year and a half, we're going to move away from Blue Ocean. Uh, the pipeline graph view has become a really solid alternative. Uh, and with the amount of work that's been done since even the end of January to now um, has really pushed it very far along to the point where it's a more than acceptable replacement and alternative to Blue Ocean. Uh, so what uh, I've done here is created a project in uh, GitHub that's going to hold on to the tasks that we need to do for that deprecation and what we need to consider. Um, so what I've done is I've just put in, I've put in a handful of tasks that I'm pretty sure we're going to have to at least consider, if not follow through on. Uh, and so uh, I'm just adding in some descriptions and some examples of where that's going to be. I'm still working on getting those all up to date. You can see that some of them have like smaller, medium size uh, loads on them, but not all of them. And uh, some of them don't have content yet. But again, uh, I'm putting that stuff together today. And uh, I'm going to grab screenshots and little direct links to the stuff that needs to be, uh, that should be part of these, each one. Uh, so, all that being said, um, you know, there's things like updating the Blue Ocean status note that we've discussed, um, making sure the screenshots are okay, ensuring that uh, when we do get the version doc site going and integrated, that latest includes what is truly latest. So when we do get to that point of Blue Ocean's deprecation, that it's not included any further in that latest build or going forward. Um, you know, these are all things that are relatively reasonable that we can take care of. Um, but without a known quantity of when that's going to happen, it's tough to do this all preemptively. Uh, so what I'm trying to consider is the things that are a little bit more general or just the things that we can uh, effectively take care of or consider or work towards in the meantime. And then as we get closer to that point where blue ocean deprecation is truly being discussed, then we can you know, get to those details, get to those points of, um, you know, hey, this is the version that the docs are going to start not having blue ocean in and stuff like that. Um, but it's a work in progress. It's not happening in the next day or two or a month or, you know, a couple months even. Uh, so we're not going to worry about that too, too much right now. Um, but yeah, uh, it's something that uh, Mark and I have discussed uh, trying out because the project is a new, well, the projects had a previous version and this is the newer version of projects in GitHub. So thought it'd be a nice way to kind of test it out and see. Um, so I've set it up like this. This is a, can, a Kanban board, Kanban board, however you want to say it. Uh, this is something that we, that's typically used in a lot of agile planning. Um, frankly, I just think it makes sense visually that it looks like this and um, it's already got the statuses and a lot of the other stuff already kind of configured. And so uh, just an easier way to track that work and uh, we'll add more as time comes. Um, any questions on the Blue Ocean deprecation stuff or anything along those lines? No, except I can't wait <laughs> until it's officially <laughs> deprecated. <laughs> Sorry, boy. Yeah. So, It'll be nice. What a what a lovely time it will be. It'll be like the <laughs> rainbows come out, the, the rain stops. And all that. <laughs> yeah. Things like that. I even don't tell you about the bomb uh, build, you know, uh, when we have to build these set of plugins, the Blue Ocean plugins, it's really long, difficult, and well, uh, you don't want to work with that. So yes, it has done its time, I guess. Uh, it was useful. It was pretty. It was really nice, but uh, it's time to retire, Blue Ocean. Bye-bye. <laughs> Definitely. And uh, yeah, and like, uh, like I was saying before, the pipeline graph view um, has really changed a lot of what that means for the project and Jenkins usage. Um, 
again, this was not something that was necessarily even a realistic alternative at one point in time. Um, thanks to a lot of work that was able to be done with uh, Fostum and the Jenkins Contributor Summit, uh, we got a lot of face-to-face -face time, a lot of discussion, and a lot of uh, agreements to have people collaborate and work together on getting this to a better point than it was. Uh, and again, and that was at the end of January, beginning of February. So that's been a lot of work done in a short amount of time. Um, so just great to have that be where it is now. Um, oh, yeah, no, it was towards the end of February. Oh, no, that was a few years ago. I'm lying. Oh, yeah, three years ago. But nonetheless, it has made quite a lot of progress in the last few months. Yeah. And that's the that's the main point of it all. And uh, yeah, it's not going to replace every functionality that Blue Ocean no. has, but uh, at this point, it's a it's a couple of functions that might not even be worth keeping around Blue Ocean for. And if you need pipeline visualization, it's an excellent alternative and replacement. If you need something really specific, like activity view or something uh, even more more particular in Blue Ocean, then uh, that might be a tough sell, but again, uh, from 85 to 90% of what you want to do, the pipeline graph is a really good like, uh, update to that and a lot more user-friendly and all of that as well. Yes, it is. There is a, a good indicator, I would say. Uh, in the recent tutorials we converted to Docker Compose, for example, we switched from using Blue Ocean to using the pipeline graph view. And frankly, there has been no uh, limitation uh, detected of course, we're not using each and every feature uh, of Blue Ocean translated to uh, the pipeline graph view, but for most of the simple use cases, it's more than enough. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, uh, you know, in, in my experience, I think that if someone needs a more specialized task or requirement, they have several ways of figuring that out or getting to that point. Um, and there's, you know, there's close to 2,000 plugins in for Jenkins in and of itself. If you can't find it there, I'd be hard pressed to find it somewhere else. So yeah, there's a lot uh, to explore. And again, maybe someone decides that they have, they don't have the functionality they need. Maybe they take it upon themselves to create a new plugin. You know, that's an option that they have down the line. Who knows? Cool. Thank you very much, Bruno and Chris. Appreciate again all the insight and. Sharing. Cool. Uh, and so the last thing I have on the agenda again uh, this week, Asia Docs office hours are canceled. Mark's uh, having his birthday today, so he's out of, away from the office. Uh, and then Mark is also out of office uh, all next week, so he wouldn't be he won't be available for Asia Docs office hours next week as well. Um, both have been removed from the events calendar, so there's no need to panic or worry about anything like that. If you're concerned or have questions, it's not going to be there. Uh, excuse me. You can always check the document or reach out in the Ginner channels to check in and see if there's anything you're missing out on. But um, yeah, the this week and next week's stage of the docs office hours are going to be canceled. Okay. And that brings us to the end of the agenda for today. Uh, is there anything else that uh, either Brew or Chris you wanted to share, or uh, have we? Yeah, we're. Or if not, we're all set too. I would have loved to tell you. Oh, Chris, I'm done with um, install uh, Jenkins on top of Docker uh, tutorial, but that's not the case. So I won't be able to tell you. I'm done. It's not far from being uh, a draft pull request. I have done most of the screenshots, but I still have to. Uh, switch two parts, you know, because I started with the most uh, simple way of starting uh, Jenkins with Docker, which does not include the traditional wizard. So I have to put the wizard first and then the simplest, the simplest way. So I have a few things to work on before uh, creating a draft pull request. And I have a blog post in the writing. It has been the case for several weeks now. Um, I don't nobody remembers, but I wrote one year ago a blog post about how to install Jenkins on an Android phone. By Jenkins, oh, I mean a controller that. and an agent. Okay, thank you. <laughs> and oh, <laughs> and that's um, the follow-up, in fact. Um, so yeah, it's too long uh, for my test. It will take some time to review. I'm sorry about that. 
but uh, it should be ready next week or the week after. No, no, it was, yeah, it was in April, I think, uh, 2023. And yeah, it was just for fun. I hope nobody will do that for real. Okay, we'll get out of there then. <laughs> yes. Cool. Well, no worries, Bruno. You take time and do what you need to do. I don't think Chris will be mad or anything like that, but I don't want to speak for Chris. There you go. All right, cool. All right, so then uh, we'll go ahead and stop the recording in just a moment. Uh, the recording will be available in 24 or 48 hours, posted on community.jenkins.io, uh, and we'll see you next week. Until then, take care, stay safe, uh, and if you have any questions or uh, concerns, always reach out on uh, the Matrix, Gitter, or uh, whatever IRC channel you might want to use. Uh, thanks, and take care. Thank you. Thank you, folks. Bye-bye.